So um, he, of course, is a high school, or the um, varsity baseball coach, and his favorite player of all time was Matt Wright. He just loved Matt's energy, and he loved his sense of humor, loved everything about him. And so when Matt passed away of cancer, um, we got pregnant with um, our Matthew, and it was not even a question. I, I had no say in anything. We knew right away that his name had to honor um, Matt Wright, and so Ben picked the name Matthew. It was during the ultrasound two weeks before he was born that they found that there was something um, wrong. They were not sure what, but they found that the entire right side of Matthew's um, brain was covered in fluid. And at that point, they were not sure if the fluid had happened and it stopped the brain from growing on the right side or if the brain had a chance to develop and then the fluid happened and it pushed the brain out of the way. And that was just something that we would not know until Matthew was born and until he started to um, progress. The um, song All of Me is a song that we declared over Matthew when he was born, which basically just says that no matter what happens, we are going to love Matthew with everything that we have and that he was going to have all of us, um, whether it was for a week, a month, two months, um, that we were going to pour everything that we had into Matthew. He had his first surgery when he was four days old. So they went in to relieve the pressure from the fluid in his brain. And um, essentially there was um, a fluid sac in the front of his head, a fluid sac in the back. And so they drilled holes between the two fluid sacs and then they drilled holes between um, the right and the left side of the brain that would allow the fluid to then circulate. And it was during that surgery uh, that our surgeon came in and told us that they had found a mass and that it could be either A, which was bad, or B, very bad. And um, at that time we didn't know. We tried to really stay positive and just really think that it was going to be A, type A, um, but it was actually type B turning into an even worse um, form of cancer. At six days old, that we met with our neuro-oncologist and that's when he kind of gave us the ultimatum. He gave us um, the option. We could either choose hospice um, and just send him home and let him go comfortably at home or we could fight for him um, and attempt to do chemo. But at that point, there had been no other baby born with his type of brain cancer that had ever survived the past four months. I guess for me trying to sort things out for myself emotionally and mentally and everything like that, I just, I don't know, I just kind of blurted it out to the doctor. And without hesitation, he said, no, he's completely healthy other than what's going on in the brain right now. So with that, I, I, don't, I wouldn't say that I felt better, but I felt like if his lungs, heart, kidneys, and everything are healthy, then we got to give him a chance. He was basically going to be the first kid who was ever going to fight this cancer head on. Um, we both broke down, first of all. Um, to sit in a room with a doctor who basically tells you that your baby has a 0% chance of survival at four days old was really hard. Um, and Matthew has had five brain surgeries, um, six surgeries um, total. We did five rounds of chemo. During the fifth round of chemo, he started to have something called infantile spasms. So his brain was having these spasms that was causing him to hit himself in the head. The only way to treat the infantile spasms was through a steroid. And he can't be on steroid and chemo at the same time. And so we had to decide if we were going to treat the spasms and stop chemo and risk the tumor growing or if we were going to ignore the spasms and let them take their course, which would basically make him regress into a vegetable um, and focus on the cancer. We decided that we were going to stop the chemo and focus on the spasms. Chemo was August 13th of 2012, and without chemo, the tumor shrunk. Three months later, we did another scan and the tumor shrunk again without chemo. So we did another scan three months later and the tumor stayed the same. And the tumor is still stable. 
and the tumor um, that is on his spine actually hasn't grown either. Um, he will never be cancer free. But the good news is, is that for um, a lot of kids who are born at Matthew's age, we think they, their five year survival is around 50%. Yes, Matthew has defied the odds. Yes, Matthew has cancer, and yes, he could die tomorrow, but the truth is, any of my kids could die tomorrow. Matthew has literally fought for every single second of his life. He has um, fought cancer with a smile on his face every single day. He's a kid who literally wakes up with a smile on his face, and he smiles all day long, and he goes to bed with a smile on his face. Um, he just loves life, and he completely lives life, and he gives everybody his little infectious smile and just draws them in and lets them know that it's going to be okay. We wanted to let people know that there's always hope. And so no matter how long we had Matthew, we didn't know if we'd have him for two weeks, two months, um, even a year. But we wanted to know that his life was not lived in vain. And we wanted to know that Matthew's life was going to change somebody else's life. When you are faced with possibly losing one of your kids, um, the only person you have to lean on is each other and the only person who's going to understand what that feels like is Ben. We just needed to know that through all of this something good was going to come of it. Nothing is impossible and that if somebody tells you that something is impossible you are the one that can make it possible. You fight, 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 and don't ever let somebody tell you that you can't do it, and don't ever let a situation define who you are. Can you say bye-bye? Bye-bye. Can you give kisses? Can you wait? Can you give kisses?